Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Vibe Different. It's me, Kat, and I am so excited for what we're getting into. If you didn't check out last episode, that was with Ellie, and we are currently in Missions May, so she was giving us all the deets on that. So thank you so much for listening. Today, I am so excited because we have two brand new guests that you guys have never heard from on this podcast, and we that is Andrea Levings. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I, I did do that just awkwardly. Just waving to the masses. Yes, yeah, just a wave, just a wave. She is our <laughs> missions director here at Greenhouse, and we also have Wendy Roche. Hi, everyone. Hello. She is our local missions coordinator. So they are two amazing women who are going to just really bring a lot of information that we very much need, including myself. But I'm really excited <laughs> for what we're going to do today. So. Andrea, do you want to tell us a little about yourself? Sure. Well, like what you said, um, my name's Andrea Levings. I have, I've worked on staff at Greenhouse for the past 10 years, and I think like seven, seven and a half of those, I've mm-hmm. been the missions director. Let's go. And so, yeah, I love my job. I think I have the best job on staff. Um, and I'm trying to think of anything else. So fun fact <laughs> about me and the past, you know, like during COVID, like I feel like everyone was like doing a bunch of different like hobbies yeah. and, and different. So like the whole like bread baking and like learning all these that dances. Was a thing. Yes, it totally was a thing. Definitely got into that. But I think one of the other things a lot of people were doing like this and like ancestry, like uh, mm. looking into that. And so I didn't do that actually because I was doing like the cheap stuff like bread baking. But <laughs> one of a couple of my cousins got into it. And so I found out in the past uh, year that like my family like had this huge secret. I always thought I was like Spanish. That's what mm. I've been told my whole life. Um, actually found out that like my family, I am like half Syrian. And wow. apparently my Syrian family was was like moved to Spain for safety. And then it was like this whole like loving secret. So, so yeah, my fun fact is like I had an identity crisis and I'm figuring (laughs) all that out now, but um, I'm into it and I'm excited. So I'm learning all things Middle Eastern now. And like, I love that for you. (laughs) Who am I? (laughs) Who am I? Always the question. Wow. (laughs) Love that. Okay. Okay. Wendy, would you like to, you know, enlighten us a little bit? Yeah, sure. So I'm Wendy Roche. I am local missions coordinator here. Um, as as far as my fun facts, so I am multilingual. Okay. Um, I grew up in Haiti before moving to West Palm Beach mm-hmm. and eventually ended up in Gainesville to attend University of Florida. Go Gators! Um, and here I am um, many years later and I've been on staff for about eight years. Wow. It's my anniversary, work anniversary will be in a few weeks next yeah, month. So um, it's been great and I do enjoy my job as well. Oh, they great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's always good to hear people actually like what they do. First red flag yes. is if you don't. <laughs> All right, so we are gonna jump straight in. I'm really excited for us to just really hear more. A lot of today is clearing up some of those misconceptions mm, yeah. about missions. I know even like, like you were saying during COVID, my hobby was TikTok, <laughs> so I was on it for a lot. And I started seeing a lot of just things about missions pop up. And it was really interesting. It was point of views that I'd honestly never heard before. Mm. So things like um, missions is like very gentrifying yeah. or maybe just missions is outdated. Like a lot of mm-hmm. um, questions are, do we need it? And so it really did bring up a lot of questions for myself. I was really glad that I could go to different people and have those answered. but. Yeah. I started to notice that like a lot of people were either asking the same questions or really starting to believe in some things that I just knew maybe weren't fully like showing the whole picture. And so I'd be excited for us to even talk about that today. So things such as like missions, having like a white savior complex, just a lot of privilege, um, even like why the church gives has really been questioned. So instead of becoming like defensive about that, I love if we could even just see like, what does the Bible say? Cause we know that that can ultimately help bring just like so much peace. And so, I think a good first first place to start would be what is like biblical missions. Um, okay. What does that look like? Is that a right way, a wrong way? I know it's kind of loaded, but yeah, no, that's a that's a great question. Mm-hmm. Well, I listened to um, I think it was last week's episode with Ellie Rose, mm-hmm. and I heard her. I was like listening when you guys are talking about missions. My ears perked up, <laughs> and I think Ellie said this, and I really liked it. Um, she kind of used the definition of missions um, is it's making God known, mm-hmm. and so I think that that's a great definition. I would probably add on to that that yeah, missions is making God known, I think with a specific focus Mm -hmm. on places where he's not 
known okay. already or where there's not access to even knowing about mm -hmm. him. So about uh, right now, about 40% of the population lives without access to the gospel. Okay. So that's different than like right now, I've been like inviting one of my neighbors to church and like sharing the gospel. And so she's not saved, um, but she has access. Like if you drive, cause we're in Gainesville, like down 39th <laughs> Avenue. Yeah. It's like, I think I passed like 30 churches on my yeah. way to church or she has believers in her neighborhood because I live there if mm -hmm. nothing else. So, um, but uh, right now about 40% of the world they don't know someone who knows Jesus okay. and they don't have the Bible potentially in their heart language. So, um, from a biblical standpoint, so that, yeah, so I would just probably add that caveat on because I personally think it's a pretty great injustice mm -hmm. of our time with all the technology resources and people yeah. that almost half of the world's population mm -hmm. still lives without the chance to hear G the, like the truth and story of Jesus one time or that, um, God loves them. So I would add that on as far as like the biblical, like where we see, um, missions in the Bible, uh, I would probably be like a five hour podcast. So we won't go there right now. <laughs> okay. But my short answer is like, you see missions from Genesis to revelation mm -hmm. all the way back in Genesis 12, a, a lot of people, especially if you grew up in church, the whole like mm -hmm. father Abraham, like songs or flanagrams, <laughs> like depending on your age or whatever, yeah. like all the way back from like God telling Abram and his family, he said, I set you apart. And the reason that God blessed them was never about them, them themselves only being blessed. He said, I bless, I bless you so that you will be a blessing to all families of all nations. Nations. Like the nations will be blessed through you. We see over and over in the Old Testament, like especially a lot of like Veggie Tales known stories where it's like, uh, you know, Love like David and, <laughs> David and Goliath. And yeah. we and we read that story and we read it as like, you can go slay your giants too. And like, yes and amen, God will do that. But right after that, God's like, yeah, I did this so that the nations could see the glory of God. Like, and mm -hmm. over and over all these stories yeah. about the nations knowing um, God. And that's always been his heart is to have all nations know him. And then, um, I think, I think Ellie and you guys talked about it too last, last week and Matthew, the great commission that we say a lot, just like go and make disciples. It's actually like go and make disciples mm -hmm. of all nations. It's not just yeah. a general command. It's actually very specific to make mm -hmm. disciples of all nations. So you know, all the way through, you see, um, new Testament and acts and all the way to revelation where, where we're looking at the mm -hmm. future and what's going to come. And Jesus is like, I'm coming back when, when my, this gospel, has been proclaimed to all nations mm -hmm. of the earth. So I think the biblical definition of, of missions is that it is a non-negotiable and we can get into some of those tricky mm -hmm. things. I think terrible things have been done in the name yeah. of missions, which like the church has, I think that they have repented to, to some extent. I think we still need to actively be taking ownership and have a repentant yeah. heart of like us doing stuff in the name of missions, which was not biblical missions. But mm -hmm. I do think that our only options are to either engage in the mission of God or to be disobedient to his very clear mandate yeah. to us. So. That's good. Thanks so much for that. Yeah. So even looking at that, so now that we have a good foundation, like, okay, so this is what missions are. Um, there's a lot of different ethical questions I feel yeah. like are being brought up and some of them are really valid. Um, I know when people used to bring up like these issues, like, oh, like missions, just you go in and you just kind of like act like you're helping for a week and then you leave. And so I used to hear things like that. And I personally, maybe this is because of my personality, um, but I'd get really defensive. I'd be like, no, that's not true. Because I once like really believe the best. And yeah, um, it probably was. Yeah, true, but unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately, it probably was true. So yeah. I've had to like really humble myself and also learn like, okay, like let me hear the other person's side. Yeah. And so there's been a lot of learning on that part. And luckily I am really thankful that like, I've been able to learn a lot and actually really have like my heart softened towards missions, softened towards people who've been hurt by that mm -hmm. and realize that arguing with people probably isn't the heart of Jesus anyways. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our students face that too. Like some of them maybe have felt like a call to missions, but now are kind of like almost embarrassed about it because it's really not like the cool thing. Um, so how would you guys handle this or like, what would you kind of like maybe suggest to people or students to do when they're in this predicament of just feeling like they have to now like defend this? If okay. that makes sense. Yeah, no, I think I think that the world has called out some really atrocious and just evil things that have been done mm -hmm. in the name of missions. And I think some of it has been bad intention. Like if you look at the crusades and like obvious like yeah. examples of like, oh, we're gonna do something for missions even, but that it just uh, cripples the local economy or mm -hmm. it is just like we like to export the gospel and our Western dream, which is not mm -hmm. even really working out for Westerners. So it's like, yeah. why would we export that? So 
I think acknowledging that okay. is is an important step that that has been done. Um, however, just because missions has been done poorly doesn't mean that there aren't examples of it being done really well. Yeah. And also, again, that that's in the Bible. Um, I think one of the things that's come to light a lot in the past um, several years has even been, I think you mentioned mm-hmm. like the savior complex. Yeah. And so something I've heard, I think that there's been some good organizations and leaders that have seen things that have been done poorly and it's like okay but we know that this is a clear mandate like we have Mm -hmm. to be obedient to this if we if we actually say that we're going to be ruled by scripture and do what the bible says yeah you actually have to be part of the great commission like Mm -hmm. it is for all of us now that's going to look different now all of us are supposed to go and move overseas people that are listening to this probably some of you are just to Mm -hmm. be completely honest but we're also uh, we're all supposed to be a part of that so I think in terms of like savior complex, I think that there is a lot of damage sometimes from Westerners going um, into cultures. Uh, I heard um, a leader, one of my favorite leaders in missions, Dick Brogdon, he leads an organization, Live Dead. And I've also heard like the Chalmers Center, Mm -hmm. a lot of different organizations do this well. But they're like, you shouldn't even be working within a people group until you know enough about that people. Like you're going and you're learning about the culture where you're seeing and identifying strengths of that culture. That's good. And beauty within Mm -hmm. that culture. And that's become a common practice. I think of like good Mm -hmm. missionaries and good missions organizations where they're like, you're not even going to preach the gospel or do missions work until you're first just living incarnationally there. Mm. And until you actually can tell stories of beauty and stories of stre- like strengths of that community, because the Bible says that like all people were created in the image of God. So if I'm going to another culture, that culture is going to reflect part of the kingdom of God and image of God that's that good. like is lacking mm-hmm. in my culture. And that's actually a strength there. So I think that a good, like, and whether that's like just me going to East Gainesville or me going to somewhere in Tibet and working mm-hmm. with a people group there until I'm able to identify some of those strengths yeah. and beauties, I probably really shouldn't be working there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think when you do recognize that and you go from that strength mentality, it, it helps that savior complex because mm-hmm. you're not coming in to rescue. It's coming in and like, okay, what are your strengths and weaknesses? What mm-hmm. are my strengths and weaknesses? How can we work together? And yeah. I also think that we don't, then you get to know someone and you tend to not stereotype people, you know, yeah. like if I'm for, I've worked with Wendy for years and she's mm-hmm. my friend. If she does something, I tend to not just like make a sweeping, you know, like generalization of, oh, that's because Wendy's Haitian or because she's a woman or because she's whatever. It's like, no, I know Wendy, which I think that that can be a real danger is we okay. we just are like, oh, well, Tibetans just do this or these people just do this or China mm-hmm. is just like this. And it's like, no, if you know people, we tend to not yeah, make those um, stereotypes, I think, which can lead to a lot of damage. And then the second thing I would say, too, as far as like healthy missions is ultimately mission should be as Christians, I'm Mm -hmm. speaking to Christians here, not just like uh, humanitarian work though. That's part of it. Ultimately the reason behind why we participate in mission is that Jesus would be glorified among every nation, Mm -hmm. tribe and tongue because he deserves the glory of the nations because of what he did. When you are doing missions work first from for people, instead of from a place of worship and obedience to Jesus, I 100% think that savior mentality comes out Mm. because then you are doing it for people. And so like you are the gift to, you are God's gift to the people, right? Like they need (laughs) you. And I want, I participated, like, listen, my first mission trip was like, if you want to talk about toxic mission trips, like I was the poster <laughs> child for it, like decided I wanted yeah. to go to a specific country. I was like, oh, cool. I can fundraise to go here. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And like, but when people do work of a place of loving Jesus first, and that's mm-hmm. your predominant reason, and the people are second, then I think we recognize that we're not the savior in that situation. And that can be done healthy. Oh, that's really good. And I would say something that you mentioned of, just the times that we're in, Mm -hmm. it's very easy to feel defensive of like, oh, how could you say this? Um, One, just being honest Mm -hmm. and like for us taking ownership, obviously there are things that happened in the past, but for us, it's like, we're part of like the lineage, you know, as believers and Mm -hmm. being honest of like, hey, the church hasn't always taken responsibility. Mm -hmm. And at times that we were supposed to be at the forefront, of missional endeavors Mm -hmm. and justice issues we failed so being honest uh, uh, about that because i think a lot of times people are just like okay like the church is dismissing this and not being honest so i would say that's even like a first step of like yes we failed (laughs) um and then to add on to what andrea mentioned of like relationships Mm -hmm. it's very much key like we do want to Mm -hmm. um be with people and do things with them and not just for them 
Uh, so I would in- emphasize that yeah. even for us with um, our different community things that we do, mm-hmm. uh, we make sure we identify leaders that are already in the community and we're not just cool. coming in and like, hey, um, we know what you need. It's like, no, we hear people's stories. We mm-hmm. hear where they're at. Um, and I'll share a quick story about one yeah. of our leaders years ago. Um, she shared this herself, so I know it's OK to okay. bring it up. <laughs> Uh, she was speaking to one of the young men in the community and she was like, hey, you know, don't you want to get a great education Mm -hmm. and move from here one day and, you know, do all of these things? Mm -hmm. And the young boy looked back at her and was like, "Um, actually, I love it here. You know, my family's Mm -hmm. here. My friends are here. I have a playground. I have a basketball court. And he Mm -hmm. was saying all of the positive things that he has. And she took a step back. It's like, oh, man. I'm putting my own narrative mm-hmm. onto him. And for him, his narrative is like, this is great. I have all these positive things. So for us, it's like, okay, once you get into relationships, you get to know people's narratives and you're not just imposing your own. And that does yeah. change things. And I know you mentioned the Chalmers Center, like one of the things that um, they've done a study of like most of us and around the world will define poverty as like lack of resources or materials mm-hmm. or money. Uh, but for those who are impoverished they would um define poverty as like shame inferiority or powerlessness Mm. so if you're not like aware of that and being in someone's shoes and hearing their stories it's easy to have your own perception so um i would say that like even the defensiveness like hey actually listen to someone's story and heart and kind of meet them there and then you know go from there yeah that's so good i love what you just shared for sure yeah yeah I think that that what Wendy, the principle that Wendy talked about with like local leaders and listening Mm -hmm. to their stories too, that's important for locally. Like if you're doing local outreach and justice initiatives and international as well. One of the part of my job is people, well, people come to Wendy and I both to sometimes ask the church for uh, financial support if they're Mm -hmm. going overseas and doing work. One of our questions is always like, hey, were you invited by like a local there, like by a national leader? And yes or no, even regardless of the answer, what is your plan? for like working with local leaders and nationals mm-hmm. there and like what is your plan then to be led by them because if you're taking the gospel somewhere where there's no local christians like you can't you're going to need to be probably the man or woman in charge for a, mm-hmm. a little bit but then the very quick you should have a plan where a local leader is actually leading you and you're listening yeah. to their um directives for the community because they're going to know that best mm-hmm. and then so as soon as you make like uh there are local christians the, the plan should be that they are actually the leaders of the church and, oh, yeah. and so i think that that's even a question i personally like even just as andrew not the church like i don't support overseas missions that doesn't have some type of framework for mm-hmm. le- working with yeah. local leaders or a plan for that yeah that's really cool i like my first time i think hearing really that model like in depth i'm I'm in GSM now, just Greenhouse School of Ministry, subtle plug. <laughs> and we have a missions and justice like module. And it was so helpful because it was like really in depth, covered so much. And it was one of those ideas of like, why not empower people? Which I feel like, especially with Gen Z, like mm. they are the empowerment generation. Like they yeah, love seeing other great. people like rise to the occasion and have those opportunities. And so even seeing like, hey guys, like, the things you actually don't like about missions, like that's like shifting. Like we recognize like, yeah, empowerment should be a thing. So yeah. I think it's really cool for them to see that that's such like a, an important aspect of it. So mm-hmm. even like now shifting, I know missions and justice, sometimes it's like very tied together, but they're kind of separate, but mm-hmm. they're also kind of really closely related. Yeah. It's like such a, such an interesting web. And so I guess yeah, the question I've heard a lot from some people is, like the Bible, does it have a certain topic or like, does God have a certain chosen people, certain nation? Like, is this very closed off? Um, Is there an idea that maybe is most important to God, like in terms of justice issues? So is he kind of like a bubble God or Mm -hmm. is it more broad than even we see? So if you guys could like even speak to that. Yeah, I would say across the board, Mm -hmm. um, we see that God's heart specifically Mm -hmm. um, has been for those who are impoverished and the vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I'll kind of answer the specific as far as like, oh, is there a specific um, topic or issue? Because I feel like in our world, in our society, Mm -hmm. um, there might be issues that we're like, oh, we're passionate about and I Mm want to focus on that. But I feel like Obviously, across the board, God's heart is for people. Um, But we see uh, specifically 
um, Tim Keller refers to quartet of the um, vulnerable. Yeah. Um, it's the poor, the foreigner, the orphan, um, the widow. And I would say within the book of Deuteronomy, we see that it tells us like, hey, defend the cause of the fatherless and the widow, um, love the foreigner, do not deprive of the foreigner. And almost like there's a command, but also like a blessing mm -hmm. with that too of like, hey, when you do those things, like I commend you to do this. Um, when you remember the poor, like then you will be blessed. Like we see that in the New Testament as well. Like mm -hmm. Matthew 25 tells you like for I was mm -hmm. hungry and you gave me something to eat. I yeah. was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. Like if you're mm -hmm. throwing a luncheon, like don't do it for those who are re yeah. rich that can pay you back. Do it for the poor. Mm -hmm. um, so I across the board, like there is hundreds of biblical texts that mm -hmm. tells us like, oh, God does still look at our society, but what we do mm -hmm. um, for the poor. So I would say um, as far as that, like we see that the poor has always been very close to God's heart. Yeah. Um, and even when Jesus walked on earth, like the people that we found him around were the lonely, mm -hmm. um, the yeah. forgotten, yeah. the outcast, tax collectors <laughs> that, you know, people hated and despised. Yeah. And it's like, okay, if that was the example that we had um, with mm -hmm. Jesus walking on earth, how much more should we follow um, in those steps? Mm -hmm. And I think for us, even as a church, it's like, okay, mm -hmm. where are some of the places that you find those who are marginalized and vulnerable, That's even good. in our community? And what are we supposed to do about it? So yeah. I would say, yeah, it's worth close That's to great. God's heart. Yeah. yeah, no, I agree. I think one of the things you brought up earlier too in terms of justice and uh mission if you're doing biblical justice and biblical mm -hmm. missions which are i know two different things but a lot of times they like yeah. go hand in hand <laughs> is mm -hmm. um one of the hardships also or at least conversations i'm not the biggest TikToker myself but i've had a lot of conversations mm -hmm. with gen z about TikTok um mm -hmm. and with justice and missions in the name of jesus and like that coming against culture mm -hmm. and so one of the things i think of even with justice is if you go to greenhouse um you know like missionary sam is one of the yeah. people that we support and he's a local um leader which is one of the reasons that we support him in such a big way is because he's helping fight human trafficking in his like in his country that he was born in and in surrounding countries and his culture in southeast asia but um even kind of like that whole struggle of does biblical justice or the biblical missions like do they destroy culture is that wrong because destroy i think that i think because culture has been destroyed unnecessarily and not in like in a way that's necessary at all then we have this belief in that pushing against any culture is wrong, like as an mm -hmm. absolute truth. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah, so that's the thing I've like talked to students about when they're talking about justice. And the thing is like the gospel absolutely like is actually it opposes a lot of cultures. Like the true gospel opposes my Western culture and like mm -hmm. even my Western dream and like my independence and all these things, <laughs> yeah. being a strong independent woman and making money and all of that, like, and you know, just like not being in community and all a bunch yeah. of stuff, like that is opposed to the gospel. And so that part of my culture actually does need to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And it's actually for my betterment and empowerment. It's like in missionary Sam, like we support him and that he is going and like literally like at the root, helping stop human trafficking from like four labor and like little children being trafficked for their body that is part of the culture in in the country that he lives and i'm, I'm quoting him i'm not mm -hmm. just like making that yeah. you know call as an american like that's what he says so then when you're doing biblical missions or biblical justice like i do think we have to ask we shouldn't destroy culture for the sake of like the gospel and andrea exporting her western american whatever my mm -hmm. dream is but the part that stands in opposition to god the gospel like Absolutely. Like mm -hmm. that actually does need to be destroyed and it needs to crumble. And it's for the betterment of people. Yeah. Like it is just, if you give to missionary Sam, you are actually giving, and I don't want people to give less money. You are actually giving to <laughs> yeah. part of that culture being destroyed, but it's evil and it's against people. And so yeah. like the gospel, it, it does oppose culture, but like, that's where mm -hmm. we just have to make sure that the, those are the parts of culture that yeah. we are okay with. But I just wanted to wrestle with that a little bit because mm -hmm. I feel like it's become an absolute truth of like anytime we oppose or destroy parts of culture, that's wrong. Yeah. And I'm like, really? So we would prefer that in Southeast Asia and parts of there where the culture actually does accept that little girls who are three years old are sold into sex slavery, we have to protect culture and not come against mm -hmm. that. So I just think that that's something to wrestle with too when it comes to biblical justice that I hear some pushback against. That's like fair, but we have to think through it all the way. Yeah, yeah. No, that's really good. I love what you said there. And I think that gives like even like students a really great way to look at like, hey, there are some things that may be very like absolute truths, 
but others others that kind of like aren't especially like being in a culture right now that's very much just like make your own way like you know do like do you boo like do whatever makes you happy but it's really seeing like okay like it's it's a death to self like yeah. even like coming coming to know god more has really been like death to self in a yes. good way in terms of like you know what like it's not just like what's going to serve me what do i think like oh let me go fulfill what i think is the best it's yeah. like no there's actually something a lot higher than me and something a lot bigger than me that's like meant to guide and so even with that like example of like well yeah. it it can't just be an absolute truth it can't just be like black and white of like protect all because if you were to ask somebody just like randomly on the street like hey do you support human trafficking i think 99 percent of people would say no yeah and so it really is just like looking at those things so even for students i would encourage you guys like if you're in these tough conversations mm. like don't feel like too ashamed or like scared of even saying like can we talk about this and like yeah, make it a conversation true. because Agreed. usually you can actually learn a lot more from people when you really get to like hear their thoughts because most people like i said like would be able to come to that conclusion for themselves as well right i think so yeah. and then i think on christians too it's exactly what wendy said if you're having a conversation with someone i think bring up piece of that like be like wait do you always mm -hmm. so you think no matter yeah. what like just destroying culture is always bad but then they're probably going to bring up some parts of history that like mm -hmm. we have to be like yeah no that was wrong and evil and i agree with you 100 <laughs> yeah. percent on that you know but mm -hmm. yeah, yeah so those open conversations yeah. yeah they're definitely so good so we have gotten to go in some really gritty stuff in a great way. Um, how would you suggest that students could really learn more, get more involved in missions? Um, a lot of them kind of get a little bummed out, like maybe after a Gainesville outreach, which is our local missions trip, because they're like, well, I'm in high school, so I can't just pack mm -hmm. up and leave. Some of them really want to be involved in missions, but they're like, I don't feel the call to go somewhere else and yeah. then do. So just like, how would you suggest maybe like in their stage of life, they could learn more and get more involved? Yeah. I would say um, starting right where you are um, mm -hmm. in your own community. Mm -hmm. um, so the mission field, and I know Andrea mentioned mm -hmm. it, like obviously we do stuff locally and globally, uh, mm -hmm. but God has you where you are at right now yeah. for a purpose. Um, okay. And it is a mission field. And even in our city, if you're in Gainesville, you're listening to this, um, there are educational disparities mm -hmm. um, in our mm -hmm. own city. There's income disparities <laughs> yeah. in our own city. They're marginalized. Like, you know, there are students who um, don't have the right resources mm -hmm. in schools and that are falling behind and literacy rates and um, you name it, the list goes on. And um, I would say start small, mm -hmm. um, kind of like finding out, okay, what are some of those things? What can I give maybe start with an hour a week mm -hmm. um, and invest there. If you're a high schooler, maybe it's tutoring an elementary age mm -hmm. student and helping them reading um, and get those reading levels up when it comes to their literacy rates. Maybe it's passing out meals and praying for the homeless downtown mm -hmm. through our homeless ministry um, that we partner with mm -hmm. SOC. Um, maybe it's doing Kids Church and one of our local neighborhood partnerships uh, and committing to mm -hmm. that and seeing that passion small. Because I feel like a lot of times the idea of just justice can be very lofty of yeah. like, mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, where do I even start? Yeah. There's a million things. There are a million yes. different areas that mm -hmm. I can serve. But really starting small and like, okay, I'm going to commit to this. And one thing that we even tell our leaders, it's like making sure you're consistent and mm -hmm. um, sustainability mm -hmm. um, happens over time. So yes. you have to be committed to one area to see change. And if you think of relationships, mm -hmm. when you have a best friend, you don't become best friend with that person overnight mm -hmm. and you don't know everything about them. So really it's like to see a student flourish or to get to know a family kind of sticking um, to it. So yeah. I would say starting there. Yeah, that's great. I think that that's great. I also think that um, there have been mission trips have gotten a really bad rap for mm -hmm. some really fair reasons. However, mm -hmm. we are seeing a lot of improvement on best practices yeah. with mm -hmm. mission trips. And so I would really encourage sometimes exposure does help you mm -hmm. identify things in your heart yeah. that like God may have wired you for that. If you, if you don't expose your heart to it, like mm -hmm. you won't know if you actually enjoy working yeah. with the poor unless you actually are friends, not mm -hmm. just like go and like, Oh yeah, I know one poor person. It's like, no, have you done life with, I do actually know the poor. Yeah. So I think it's the same thing. I am really grieved. And this is definitely very much like a specific Andrea thing. I am grieved by the disparity of 
uh, global workers or global missionaries that are going, are, that first of all, don't go out, that I think people are called to do that. And then yeah. secondly, this whole 40% of the world that doesn't have access, mm -hmm. I feel like this generation is supposed to really help like um, in, lessen that gap. So I would also say like, if you can go on a mission trip, like go on a healthy mission trip, ask good questions. Like, hey, mm -hmm. how do you work with local leaders? Hey, what's your sustainability plan? Ask them how your money that you raise and are giving them how it's going to be spent. Mm -hmm. Actually ask for a budget breakdown. Make sure it's responsible, but go and expose yourself to, to the global church. I think that that has been one of the best thing. And that's a privilege, like mm -hmm. that 100% yeah. takes money. It's not necessary, but some people do have opportunities available to them. And I think that because of some of the pushback on missions, it's like, oh, if I'm not going to go really long term or if I'm not going to go like, and I know I'm going to make a difference. Like, I do think it's okay to go and expose, mm -hmm. don't cause harm. But if you yeah. ask, if you ask wise mm -hmm. questions, you can go and see what the Lord is doing globally throughout the world and your heart will be exposed. And even if it's not you going long-term, like the Holy Spirit really, like that is an opportunity. I've just seen Jesus really like light That's people awesome. up for his global church, even if they're going to stay here. So yeah. I would encourage people to go on short-term trips too in a healthy way. That's great. Yeah, we definitely here at Youth, we miss our like abroad trips we used to go to. I know we've been to Honduras and El Salvador. So hopefully yes. in the future we can bring those back once, yeah. you know, COVID really calms down. I was about to say, I know I'm saying that too, caveat, yeah, you probably can't yeah. go like immediately, yeah. but I still want to like, yeah. Yeah, like, but even things down. like Gainesville Outreach, like I know yeah. we've mentioned this so much, but I know for some students that's really impactful. Some of them just have never like really gone out into their own city. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I had one student, that I was talking to them and they're like, I literally was born here. Like I'm an ACR, mm -hmm. an Alachua mm -hmm. County resident. They're like, and I have never been to Pine Ridge before in my life. Like I've driven past here yeah. almost every day. Like I go to the coffee shop right over there. Just really cool things where they were like, but I actually really love this. Like one student was like, wow, like I didn't think I liked kids church, but I actually really like this. Like, yeah. But they wouldn't have known if they would have never tried it. And so I think that's a really great thing of just like, sometimes you just gotta like find it and, and be consistent and see what that can even do. Yeah. So our last question just to wrap up, what are some resources for that have been really great for you guys or even for our students who maybe are like looking to educate themselves more like missions and justice? What would you kind of recommend? <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, we have a stack of books here. And When Helping Hurts by Ficker and Covert. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Thick book. I'm just Vanna White. I love it. I love it. Um, I know Ellie mentioned in one of the episodes, and that's one that when we go on mission trips, mm -hmm. we highly recommend that people read through. Um, there's Generous Justice by Tim Keller, Just Mercy, um, with Justice for All by Dr. Perkins, mm -hmm. welcome, Welcoming Justice, also by Dr. Perkins yeah. and Marsh, and then um, Rich Christians in an Age of Hunger. Um, all those, obviously, like the theme of justice and doing missions well um, throughout those books, there's a lot that you can learn from. And I would even add, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, students asking about, hey, like even in my own city, I didn't know like certain things. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I found key, even going back to the relationship aspect, yeah. is like making sure you are friends with those that you mm -hmm. wouldn't be friends with on yeah. a regular basis. It's like mm -hmm. learning to um, be friends and mm -hmm. actually talking to someone about like their story. Like it can start in your classroom. Mm -hmm. It can start mm -hmm. in you. If it's like, oh, okay, we don't have the same family background. We don't have the mm -hmm. same cultural yeah. background. Like just tell me about yourself. Um, and even before going abroad that I can be, key to like opening up your eyes to like just Absolutely. different ways of life. That's yeah, good. go to a restaurant that's owned by maybe an international family yeah. and actually talk to them. Mm -hmm. What I found like, <laughs> yeah. So ask questions and just get yeah. to experience even other cultures, even if you can't go overseas yeah. right now. All throughout on top of the books that Wendy said too, just to add for maybe non-book people, mm -hmm. um, the Chalmers Center, that's C-H-A-L-M-E-R-S. If you just Google and go to their website, uh, I talk about sustainable missions and dignity laden uh, ways to work with the poor is excellent. They have a bunch of short videos, podcasts, oh, cool. things like that. Okay. So Chalmers Center. The other thing is if you um, Google the name Gary Hagen, H-A-U-G-E-N, I think he's the founder international justice mission which is uh the largest i think it's an the largest anti-slavery um organization in the world but he's just brilliant on 
even poverty worldwide mm-hmm. and how the poor are the, like the most vulnerable to mm-hmm. abuse of power and also violence. Mm-hmm. So anything Gary Chalmers, if like he's done TED Talks or I was listening mm-hmm. to one of his podcasts on the way here. So those two, the Chalmers Center and Gary Hagen uh, for anything justice related. And then missions, if you just Google the name uh, Dick Brogdon, B-R-O-G-D-E-N, he has done a ton of sermons. Um, the Lord has used him probably more than anyone to soften my heart for the global church awesome. and unreached people group. So That's great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Those are definitely great resources. And even I just want to like encourage anybody who's listening, um, don't get like bogged down or like get yeah. down on yourself. If maybe you're like, I didn't know any of this. I know when I was first, like even listening or like doing my missions and justice course, I realized I'm thankful. Like my, I feel like my family growing up was very like missions oriented in mm, terms of like, great. my mom has always looked at people and like, how can we help? And part of that I think is literally like her DNA, but really bringing that down to my sister and I, but so I thought I knew a lot. And then when I actually did this, I was like, oh, wow, like there's a lot I didn't know. But really making sure like you're not letting like that shame take over. No. Um, really just asking God to show you like, hey, God, like what's your heart for me? What do you want me to do? And like, who should my heart break for? Like yeah. my burden is different for maybe like yours, Andrews mm-hmm. or yours, Wendy. Like my burden okay. lies a lot. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's okay. Like it's good. God really did wire us to be different and you'll see it unite. Like I've had conversations with people that we have very different burdens, but it never fails to have some point of like intersection, some point of, wait, we can like work together on this. And that's, that's God's heart. That's it's what he's unity. called his church yeah. to do is not for us yeah. all to do the same thing, but together. Exactly. You know, that's yeah. So that's really great. Um, so we cannot let you guys leave this <laughs> podcast without doing a little game of, if you know, you know, <laughs> because we just need to get to know you guys a little bit better. All right. So I find <laughs> a little, little digress. I fully prepared to ask Andrea this question after reading her like greenhouse bio and I like, I love animals today. This is really sad. I saw a deer on the road and I literally cried like, cause it was dead. Oh, I was like, I, no, it was very much like, dead. Wait, you love animals and you saw a deer and you cried. No, so oh. I literally cried. So I feel like we were like oh, yeah, kind of on the that. same path there. So Andrew, what has been your craziest animal encounter slash experience? Well, this isn't my story, but just relating to you real quick. So I'm like totally cheating. <laughs> no, to One time I was late, all the staff prayed together Tuesdays at 8 a.m. And I was late to mm-hmm. prayer because there was like a little squirrel on this. I saw a car hit it and it went flying off of the road. Yeah. And then I like pulled to the side to like try to see if I could resuscitate the squirrel. I, I don't, I, I failed. <laughs> but then I was like really late to prayer. And so someone was like, where were you? And I was like, I was trying to help a squirrel. And so I don't think they believed me. But anyway, so totally feel you on that. <laughs> You're like, what a lie. Andrea, yeah. what a lie. Yeah, I was like, no, I, I really was trying to resuscitate a squirrel. And I just, and then I needed a few moments to like collect my emotions. But anyway, okay, so my craziest animal story, I thought in like, um, in light of just like even some of our mm-hmm. global conversations, I would tell my craziest animal story that happened overseas. Um, it was not a mission trip, just to be very clear. I was totally like just being there as a tourist, which I think is beautiful and great <laughs> and a privilege if you can do it. So when I graduated undergrad, a few of my friends did the whole like backpacking Europe situation and um, did not get kidnapped. And we were in Love Rome. That. And so, you know, we were doing like all the touristy things in Rome. And um, my two friends that I went with were like maybe a little bit more organized than me. So they had been making a lot of like the decisions of we'll eat here, or get on the train here. And I was like, no, guys. OK, so in Rome, can I make some of the decisions? So we went to the Colosseum and I was like, I will find the tour guide at the Colosseum for us to use. So mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you if anyone listening to this has ever been like when you get to the Colosseum, like it's co- there's probably like 50 or more tour guides because everyone's just trying. Mm-hmm. I think they're just like independent tour guides there, at least it used to be and they're trying to get your business and convince you go with me not him or whatever <laughs> so i see this guy who had i i'm like catch him on the corner of my eye and he had like rabbits in his pockets like he had on a coat and he had like little like rabbits like a think, live like, like a live rabbit like wow. he had these animals right so like i just beeline to him now i should <laughs> naturally point out in hindsight that like all the other tour guides were like dressed kind of nicely and had people surrounding them this guy just like leaning against the building and was all alone but i didn't really care because i just saw like i think he had rabbits and like not a squirrel but whatever the italian squirrel which was like i feel like way cuter or something like a little really situation. bougie yeah. <laughs> so you have like all these little animals in his pocket so i go to him and i'm like do you give chores and he's like yeah yes so anyway gave Such him our scam. money i was like we're ready so i like i go to my friends and i'm like i have this guy 
He, no, he did give us a tour. He was, I, I hope it's okay to talk about drunkenness like on the show. <laughs> what I didn't it realize because I was just so um, fascinated by the animals was that he was very not sober. Oh, and so <laughs> we like, I gave him all of our like tour money that we had. And he's like giving us this tour of the Coliseum. And I am not like a Roman historian expert, but like, he's like, yeah, he's like, this was the Coliseum where like the gladiators would come out and they would fight animals and they would, they would fight the lions and the tigers and the bunnies and the in the uh, giraffes and the rhinoceros <laughs> he's like in the puppies and the kittens and the birds he was just like oh, kept going yeah. noah's ark and i was like <laughs> the gladiators fought cats like oh my god and like he just gave us this totally distorted like view of history but i got to hold a rabbit the whole time he actually tried to give me a rabbit at the end of it i didn't because i was just like international didn't know how to deal with that so <laughs> Yeah, it didn't go over really well with my friends, but you know what? To this day, I still don't really regret the experience. So <laughs> no regrets. No regrets, really. But I am going back to Italy on my honeymoon, and I'm like, I need to go to the Colosseum and actually probably get a legitimate um, tour. So that's they're gonna my... be like, we don't even allow animals in here. I will look for him <laughs> if he's there. I will look Please for him. Please do. But we will find someone else to be our so full guy. circle. <laughs> yes. Wow. Okay. Great. I expected nothing less than that <laughs> level of story from you, Andrea. Thank you. All right. So Wendy. My yes. multilingual queen, what is your favorite place you've ever visited? Or like your favorite place like on earth? Ooh. Mm -hmm. Oh man. So I feel like by default, I should say Haiti because I live here. <laughs> but um, years ago, I visited India and Ooh. I fell in love. Like wow. the sounds, um, people, smell, hospitality. And I had the hardest time when it was um, time to leave. Uh, and I was there for five weeks. So that wow, tells you yeah. I was like, Oh no, I and I miss it so much and wow. I long for the day that I get to go back. So wow. that's my answer. So, India so cool. is up there. We got some foreign travelers here. <laughs> I was about Italy, to say it sounds India. like when mission trips open back up, Wendy might be leading one to India. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm gonna out see of that the and office. be like you're just welcome. <laughs> out I'm of the office now. You guys are welcome. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So thank you guys so much for even letting me talk off your ear. This has been super helpful. I know that I was even getting asked some questions. I was like, guys, I don't know how to answer these. Mm -hmm. I need to ask people who know more. <laughs> and so thank you so much for even just joining us. Um and thank you to everybody who listened. Feel free to check us out on Instagram at greenhouse underscore youth. So you can just stay in the loop with everything with our local missions. Um, and if you're here on a Wednesday in the Gainesville area, definitely check us out. We would love to get to know you. Um, before you guys go, I want to leave you guys with just something to say and really remind yourself of. So you can pause this, play it back, but here we go. I have the power of Christ in me. I'm chosen, seen, and loved. I'm more than a conqueror. I will refuse to be moved by the tides of culture, but I will follow Christ. I'm not another statistic, but I will be a part of changing the narrative for Gen Z. We will be full of life, walk in love, and trust in Jesus. So remember to chase the faith and not the feelings. We will see you guys next time. 